If you're an investor, you compare the return on your investments all the time, but you have to do it in a standardized way, and we annualize returns for that reason. Unfortunately, it's not linear. In other words, if you invest 1% for 12 months, you end up with more than 12% at the end because you've been reinvesting the amount as you go along. So if you want to convert daily, weekly, monthly returns into annual returns, we'll show you how to do that now, very simply and very practically. So here we go. Let's start with a really simple example. What total interest would you receive if you get 0.01% per day for a whole year? But remember, this is compound interest, so we can't just do the following. 0.1% per day multiplied by 365 days in a year, which would give us total interest of 36.5%. Let's see why that doesn't work for compound interest. Let's start on day one with £100. We receive 0.1% interest on that £100, which is 10 pence. On the second day, we receive 0.1% interest on that £100 and 10 pence. But that doesn't give us £100 and 20 pence. If you see, there are two digits in red on the right hand side. We get an extra hundredth of a penny because we also receive 0.1% interest on the 10 pence interest from the day before. So let's follow this day by day. On the first day, we receive 10 pence. On the second day, we receive 20 pence plus that extra 0.01 pence. On day three, we have 30 pence plus 0.03 pence because of the compounding. On day four, we have an extra 0.06 pence. After 31 days, we're really starting to see the benefit of compound interest. We've got an extra 4.7 pence compared to just simple interest. And after a year, we end up with 144 pounds. If it was simple interest, we'd have just received £36.50. And the difference of £7.52 is due to the compounding. And the interest we've received as a percentage is 44.03%. So here it is as an equation. We added 1 to the daily rate and we raised it to the power of 365. And that's because there are 365 days in a year. To convert weekly and monthly rates, the process is almost exactly the same. But instead of raising to the power 365 to annualize a weekly return, we'd raise it to the power 52, which is the number of weeks in a year. To convert a monthly rate, we'd raise to the power 12, because there are 12 months in a year. Let's work through the example on a calculator. We take 1, we add 0 0.001, because it's 0.1%, and then you have to find this button, which is the exponent. The symbol's different on different calculators. Here it's x to the power y. On some calculators, the y is just a kind of square, for example, on Casio calculators. So we raise that to the power 365, and we get 1.44. We subtract 1, and we multiply by 100 to convert it into a percentage. And we come up with 44% as before. And then finally, here's how we do it in a spreadsheet. So we put our annualization equation into cell E3 equals, then we put our parentheses, 1 plus the daily rate in cell B3, and we raise that to the power of the number of days in the year, which is in cell D3. And finally, we subtract 1. And there's our 44.03% again. If we were to do it for weekly, the weekly periods per year is 52, and for monthly is 12. And I just copy the equation down, and there are our results. If you want a bit more detail on the maths, just take a look at pensioncraft.com and our associated blog article. What other calculations do you find tricky? We'd love to know. Tweet us at Pensioncraft, message us on Facebook, and if you want to see more of these videos, subscribe to our channel.